Hello friends, a warm welcome from Aussie's group. My name is Malcolm and I'm your PT coach. Welcome back to another of our live sessions on ptututorials.com's Facebook page and we are really happy to be back again with all of you. Well, the purpose of today's live session and very aptly I've named it like Ask Me Anything. That's the name of the live session. So basically you can ask me any of your questions you have regarding PT obviously and I'll try my best to answer it to the best of my ability obviously. Well, um, like many of these students these days, I've seen that have been struggling to get their score in the listening module. So before I start my session, just letting all of you know that just be a bit extra careful in the listening module because there are many highway tasks in the listening module, like summarize spoken text, then listening, fill in the blanks, highlight incorrect words and write from dictation. It seems as if PT has, you know, very smartly kept the main tasks right at the end. So if you're a bit tired, if mentally you're a bit fatigued, then it's very easy to make mistakes in the main tasks. And with every mistake, the score goes down very quickly. So that's the main problem in the listening module. Another thing is that also in writing, I've been coming across many essays which people write. Like obviously we check the essays which people write in the class, in our coaching. So I've seen many people make very, very silly mistakes in the essay. They forget the ED or sometimes it's a mistake of singulars and plurals. And we should know that every mistake of singulars and plurals makes a huge difference in the writing score because grammar depends and grammar decides the writing score. So just be very careful with writing. Otherwise, it's going to be really a problem. Well, We've got the first question from Chetan Borkar and Chetan is asking, okay, how to increase the score in reading? So thanks for joining in the live session, Chetan. Good to have you over here. Well, to increase the score in reading, I would suggest you to be very careful with the first task in the speaking module, which is called read aloud. Like if you don't read aloud in the proper way, then the speaking score goes down and along with that, the reading score also goes down very quickly because it's an integrated task. So just be very clear with your pronunciation and be very good with your fluency in speaking in the first task mainly. That's the first task which is very important for the reading score. It's a super high weight task. After that, another very important task which can contribute to the reading score is summarize written text. So in summarize written text, always be careful that you pick up the main keywords from the passage um, and don't paraphrase it too much. Otherwise, the meaning might change. And if the meaning of the passage changes in your answer, then again, the reading score can go down. So that's why I would recommend don't paraphrase it too much. Just try to understand the main words and the main phrases in the passage and then just try to link the phrases cohesively. And obviously, as you would know, I think you would know that in summarized written text, the answer should be one single sentence. So just try your best to pick up the main words and then just link those words a bit smartly so that you give an overall idea, which is called a summary. After that, obviously you have to focus on the fill in the blanks in the reading module. There are two types of blanks, the drop down blanks and the drag and drop blanks, which are called the reading and writing blanks, the drop down blanks and the reading blanks, which are just the drag and drop blanks. So both of these are very important for a high score in reading. So in blanks, I would always recommend everyone that just try to be more accurate don't hurry up unnecessarily in blanks because if you hurry up, then chances of mistakes increase and then obviously the score goes down. So just be very patient in the reading module. Another thing, very important thing that the reading module is a completely dynamic module, which means the questions can come in any sequence in reading. It's not fixed, but generally the sequence is that the first task in reading is the drop down fill in the blanks, which are actually called the reading and writing fill in the blanks. Generally, this is the first task with which the reading module starts and it's a very high weight task. You get marks in both reading and writing from that task. So just be very patient when you solve those blanks. The second task after that is multiple choice, choose multiple answer questions. The questions have very lengthy passages and multiple answers are correct. So just be a bit careful in this task that you don't waste a lot of time. Just be a bit quick with your time management skills. That would definitely improve your overall you know, skill and you can focus more time on the important tasks. Multiple choice, multiple answers is definitely not a very important task. So kindly don't waste too much time. The third task in the reading module is called reorder paragraphs. And reorder paragraphs, always understand the scoring. You get one point for every correct pair. 
So even if you don't get the entire sequence right, even if your partial pairs are right, partial adjacent pairs, you still get one point per pair. And that's why I would recommend you to focus on pairing as much as you can, focus on your logic. And lastly, the fourth task after that is the penultimate task, which is the reading blanks or the drag and drop blanks. So even those blanks are very important for the reading score. Try to understand the passage. Just use the knowledge of collocations. Collocations are words which come together. Like there are two types of collocations, academic and grammar based. So just focus on collocations more in the blanks and also focus on grammar. Definitely grammar plays a great role in getting the right answers. The last task is a, uh, is a multiple choice to single answer questions and that is not an important task. So don't worry much about it. And lastly, Highlight incorrect words in the listening module. That is the second last task in listening. Again, that's a very important task for the reading score. It's integrated with listening and reading. So just be a bit careful because sometimes the audio can have a really thick accent. The audio has a lot of disturbance sometimes. It's very fast. It's a lot of issues in that task. So because of that, the reading score can go down very quickly. So just focus on these main tasks. I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Well, Simmer Core has a comment. I have a question that the PT software doesn't listen to female voice, which is above 200 hertz. I think you're talking about the frequency of the female pitch. Well, Simmer, it's not like that. But yes, if your voice is very shrill, then it might be a problem because obviously it's a software and it's been pro programmed in such a way that it's going to pick up, you know, something within a certain range. So when you're testing, I would suggest, I mean, even when you're speaking in the real exam, you have an option to increase the mic volume. So at that time, just increase it a bit, not too much, but keep it a bit loud so that you know it's audible. And second thing, your own volume, your own voice volume at which you speak. Try not to be too loud with that volume because if you are too loud, then again, it's gonna be a problem. So anyway, the volume, as I'm saying, just keep it a bit high, the actual mic volume, you can set it before the test starts. So keep it somewhere around 80%, that would be ideal, I think. And the mic position should be this position because many times people keep it incorrectly and that's why the score goes down. This is the ideal mic position, you know, between the lips and the chin. It's not too high, it's not too low. This is the ideal position. So try to keep it a bit below the lips and just speak a bit louder. Don't be too loud if you have a very shrill voice. If you have a very thin voice, I would suggest you to be a bit soft in your speaking, you know, and try to sit uptight like this. Try to speak from the bottom of your stomach, from your diaphragm, so that your voice becomes a bit kind of heavy. And that always helps the clarity. And that's why the score can definitely go up. All right, Sonia has a question. Thanks, Sonia. Thanks for joining in the session. Sir, I want to know that pitch, does it really affect the speaking score? If my pitch is about 200, does it affect? Well, see, Sonia, it's very difficult to say pitch is one thing, but even the pitch varies, you know, like if two people never speak at the same pitch. The, it varies a bit and it's very difficult for me as a third person to comment, you know, whether the software will pick it up or not. So I would generally recommend you can take the scored practice test, which is available on ptetutorials.com. And if you want a really accurate, you know, representation or a very accurate picture of where you stand, then I would recommend you to buy the Pearson score test, which is sold by Pearson itself. But remember, it's not that cheap. It's a bit expensive. I mean, most of the students find it a bit expensive. Like one test you can buy for approximately, I think, 40 US dollars. So that's around approximately around 50 AUD. So it's a bit expensive. If you buy three tests, then it's 80 dollars, 80 US dollars. That's 114 Australian dollars. So that's not exactly cheap. But yes, it gives a very accurate representation of your speaking skills as per what the software expects from you. So before you take the test, it's much cheaper because the test itself is very expensive. I mean, it's same as IELTS, like $340 in Australia and India. India, I think it's maybe somewhere around maybe 13,000. I'm not sure, 12,000 rupees. I'm not exactly sure. You'll have to check it, but much better to take a scored mock test before you sit for the actual exam. And uh, yeah, definitely you can share your samples on the PT tutorials group and the tutors over there will definitely try to guide you back. They will give you feedback for your speaking samples. So you can do that as well. That will be very helpful, definitely. Well, I hope I answered your question. Thank you. 
We have got one more comment from Ranveer Verma. He's asking, what is the ideal speed for read aloud? Well, Ranveer, the ideal speed is that you should not be too slow. You should not be too fast. For example, the speed at which I'm speaking is very clear right now. This is, according to me, the ideal speed. Because if you're too fast, like if you speak the way I'm doing right now, it's too fast. But it's difficult for the software to pick up the words and the score definitely goes down. And at the same time, if you are very slow, like the way I'm right now, this is too slow. So try to speak at a continuous rhythmic flow. And that's the best speed. Like you have to take the right pauses, speak at the correct speed, not too slow, not too fast. And the reading score shoots up. The speaking score also shoots up at the right speed. So yes. Well, Aparna has a question. Hello, sir. How to do with reading and writing blanks after bulk practice? Still, I am lacking. Well, uh, Aparna, thanks for asking the question. Now, since you already practice a lot from your comment, it's obvious you put in a lot of hours in practicing it. Well, you need to understand where you are making the mistakes. That's the first thing. Second is which type of mistakes are you making? Are they vocabulary based mistakes or are they grammar based mistakes? Until you sit down, you know, with someone or you even sit down alone yourself, and you try to analyze which are the types of mistakes you're making. It doesn't help, you know, if you practice like five questions or 50 questions, you'll still keep on making the same mistakes. So first thing is you have to understand the mistakes which you're making. Second thing is that whenever you understand a mistake, try to remember what wrong have you done, you know, so that you don't repeat it again. Like many times, you know, before a preposition, prepositions are words like in, on, of, for, to, by, Generally, before a preposition, many times the word, which is the correct word, ends with ed, ends in the ed form or en or t. Most of the times, for example, he was followed by the police. So many times the word ends with ed before a preposition. So try to understand such things. And if you're good at grammar, the blanks become very easy. That's the first thing. Second thing we need to understand is collocations because PT checks a lot of collocations in the real exam. Collocations are words which are co-located as I'm sure you know about them. So PT has given a list of collocations which is called the academic collocation list. So just Google it, PT academic collocation list and you'll get a lot of words which form pairs. Now collocations is a thing which any test of English checks a lot. And if you're not good at collocations, unfortunately, you cannot get a good score. So most of the blanks do check collocations very frequently. So that's why I'm suggesting just prepare collocations from the collocation list given by PT. And thirdly, whenever you make a mistake, take some time to understand. Just analyze your mistake. That's the best way, I think. That's what I tell everyone. Like reading is a skill. It doesn't, you know, come overnight. Like it can't come overnight if you're really good at memorizing the answers. So many people also memorize the answers and clear the test because questions are repetitive in PTE. But it depends. Like if you're not that lucky, then questions will not be repeated and then you'll feel really demotivated if you rely just on repeated questions. So understand the questions. Another thing is that always see which words are before and after the blank. I mean, you can't remember the answer, but just see which words are before and after the word, which is the actual blank. Because PT can change the positions of the blanks also. So don't rely only on the answer. Just see what is on the left, what is on the right. And try to understand the whole thing. Why is this the answer? Why is the other word not the answer? You know, until you invest some time, the results won't come. So need some time. And uh, reading and writing blanks is the first task in the reading module. So should take time. Approximately two minutes per question should be enough per question i think if you're not sure at the end of two minutes take some more time maybe but remember you will have to compensate it somewhere else so it's a trade off which you need to balance in the reading module all right harsha has a comment hello sir how to improve pronunciation i always got less marks in pronunciation sorry harshna your name is harshna i'm really sorry for that well, Harshna, for pronunciation, there are three, four things we need to focus on. The first thing is that the mic position matters a lot. And ideally, it should be slightly below the lips. If it's right in front of your lips, then obviously the air sound which you breathe like 
<laughs> this sound goes in and out and obviously the cl clarity goes down so the score also goes down so keep the mic a bit low always like below the lips and above the chin this is the ideal position and keep the mic a bit closed you know some centers have mics with a long handle the handle is very far away from the lips and again the score goes down so you also know that in the real exam everybody speaks at the same time so you know what somebody else is speaking if the handle is too far and if it's a bit closer to the other person sometimes then his or her voice might be entering your recording so i would suggest you know keep the rod a bit towards your side somewhere over here that's the best position other than that also the mic volume plays a major role so increase the volume the volume is generally preset around 50 percent and i would recommend you to increase it to somewhere around around 80 percent that's ideally recommended according to me and that's enough to get a high score thirdly also never stress on the words for example you know people are from all around the world they have their own accents depending on where they come from now if there's a very strong accent generally the score goes down for example you know people from italy they're like they stress the words italiano something like that you know and even people from india people from the south of india have a different way they stress differently on words you know like climbed they have a very strong ed sound at the end of words similarly people from north of india they are very fast in some pronunciations you know like instead of support many times it's heard like sport in sport of somebody so need to you know get clear sounds from our mouth that's what pronunciation is and the easiest way believe me the easiest way to improve pronunciation is don't stress on the words at all the way i'm doing right now i'm stressing on the words so in the speaking tasks, don't stress on the words at all. Try to speak at a very flat pitch without stress at all. You remove the stress component on the words, automatically the clarity goes up. Second, always sit very straight in the test like this so that, you know, your voice comes from within. So if the voice comes from within, then again, the clarity improves. So that's one more way. Yash, can we have a look at the video one? I think again, it's tilted a bit. If you can just do something about it. Well, so that's another way to improve the clarity and the pronunciations, so, uh, pronunciation as well. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Well, we have got one more question from Mayuri. Mayuri has a question that in writing essays, is it advisable to use templates? Mayuri, the answer to your question is yes, you can definitely use templates. I mean, there is no issue with templates, but be careful that you're using a good template. And secondly, just don't use a template which has very difficult words to remember, you know, because sometimes templates are pathetically, you know, like compulsively verbose, like really fancy words are in the template, which don't help the score at all. You don't need such words. You just need correct English and you just need to write something about the given topic. So yes, you can use a template, but just see that you don't make any mistakes with the template, because if you make mistakes, the score definitely goes down. So that's the main problem with the template. So hope I've explained. Yes, you can use a template if you wish to. That's right. Well, I've got another question. I'm just looking at the question. Just give me a second, please. All right, Devan Lau Rati has a question. Sir, how to improve write from dictation? I'm missing complete sentences please reply well if you're missing full sentences then it's a big problem it means that you're not that good at picking up sentences and the only solution honestly is practice like if you want to be good at something and if you know that that thing is the most important thing in the test then obviously you should practice that is the only way like one way is that you can just note down the initials of the words on your sheet first and try to memorize, like, you know, remember or recollect what those initials are. Another thing is always try to understand the sentences in phrases. For example, it's a beautiful day to play cricket today. If the sentence is spoken like that, then try to remember the chunks or the parts in the sentence, you know. It's a beautiful day to play cricket today. So basically three parts or three phrases are there. So whenever the speaker will switch the phrase, you know, there's a slight change in the voice. So that's the only way you can easily remember the phrases. If you just focus on the words, then it's going to be a problem. 
and since also the spellings can be a bit tricky in write from dictation the only solution is practice unfortunately so i hope i answered your question just practice as much as you can until you improve your level do like 40 50 questions a day if required because if you're not good at write from dictation you cannot get a good score in pt that's for sure all right well <clears throat> I've got another question from Shrishti Chava. How to speak in androgynous range? Well, androgynous is like neither male nor female. It's like in the middle, you know, like a some, something which is a bit heavy. Now, not everybody can change their voices, you know, like sometimes people can speak in a very shrill voice, like the way I'm speaking right now. And sometimes, you know, the voice becomes really heavy. So it develops over a time, you know, you need to play with your vocal cords. Sometimes you can fluctuate a lot. Sometimes you will find it really difficult. Now, one way is if you sit a bit straight like this and try to speak, you know, from the bottom of your stomach as if you are meditating, like om, om, you know. The sound comes from within. And when the sound comes from within, it becomes a bit heavy. So one way is that. And try to sit very straight when you're speaking like this. And then lower your own volume. Just focus on your inner volume, you know, something like that. And you might be able to speak like that. It's not difficult but it comes with a bit of practice. Without practice, things will not change. That's a fact. So try it like that, hope it might help you. Ranveer has a question. Sir, if we don't understand in read aloud, can we speak anything? So yes, it's better to speak anything rather than not speaking at all. So yes, if you don't understand, don't speak anything. Just try to understand what the word is because how, why will you not understand at all? PT used like 30 or 40 seconds before the beep and I think it is more than enough time to understand. If you're not able to understand still, then just mimic the word, you know? Don't say anything, but try to, you know, mimic the letters on the screen. Just mimic the sound of whatever you understand. Just mimic it. Don't pause, don't correct yourself. And don't hesitate at all. Just keep on saying as if it's a very normal word. But you cannot say anything. If you say anything, the reading score goes down, obviously. So just try to mimic it. That's the best uh, suggestion I can give you, thanks. Well, Adnan Tarar has a question. My last scores for fluency in recent tests are 69, 61, 67, 71 and 61. So what should I do about that? Well, Adnan, see, one thing is that fluency mainly is the flow at which you speak. And you need to speak in a certain way because it's a software. It expects you to speak as if you're a sort of a native speaker. And native speakers are fluent speakers of English. So native speakers are people like Australians, Americans, British and Canadians. These four are generally considered to be native speakers of English. And Indians and South Americans are unfortunately non-native speakers. People from Pakistan, people from Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, they are not native speakers. So one thing is for sure that oral fluency will determine or will be determined by the speed at which you speak. So if you're a bit too slow, you know, if you're thinking while you're speaking, for example, in tasks like describe image or retail lecture, if you're thinking a lot and then you're saying like on the screen, I can see an image. The image is wonderful. Also, I can say that there are a lot of colors in the image. I can read India and I can read Pakistan. I can also read Australia and America. You're not fluent, you know, I mean, I'm not fluent if I read like that. So it needs to be in flow, you know, you can't think when you're speaking, something like that. It needs to be effortless speaking and it needs to be in chunks. So that's what you need to speak like, you know, on the screen is an image. The image is talking about Australian population in 1990. The highest value on the screen is 80 for Malaysia and the least value is 60 maybe for Perth. On the screen, I can see a value of 80 for Indonesia, something like that. It has to be fluent, then a slight pause, fluent, slight pause, fluent, slight pause. So basically the whole game revolves around the correct speed and the correct pauses. If the speed and pause is fine, you get a very, very high score. So that's all we need to focus on for fluency. And as I'm saying, in read aloud, repeat sentence, describe image and retail lecture, all these four tasks, don't think when you're speaking, you need to be really fluent. I think your issue could be with repeat sentences, I'm not sure, could also be with retail lecture. And I don't know, could also be with the other tasks. I'm not sure because I've not heard you're speaking, Adnan. But try to focus on these tasks and try to speak without hesitation, without fumbling, without repetition. Just be as fluent as you can. That's the main thing. Well, Simran Kaur has one more question. 
Thank you for answering also. Okay, my pleasure. One more question there. Is there any button on the headphones to set the volume at 80? Well, similar and in some centers there is a button on the headphones. Whereas in most of the test centers I've seen that before you start the test, there's a sentence on the screen before the introduction, before the personal introduction. And that sentence is for checking the mic. It's mainly the mic check sentence. You can read it any number of times, any number of times. So at that time, just next to that sentence, there's a small button, you know, it's right in the center. So I would recommend you to increase it to around 80. I think that's the main volume button. So that should be kept at around 80. And after that, you don't be too loud. You just speak at your normal, natural volume, because if you're too loud, it will not remain clear. If you're too soft, it will definitely not remain clear because the pronunciation score goes down. So try to speak in a neutral volume and I hope it will help you in the real exam. Well, Gitika has a very interesting question. Thanks for asking Gitika. If we give repeated tests, will PT marking become strict? Well, honestly, I don't know the answer to this question. But very clearly, when you leave this test a day, if you remember, PT gives you a chit, you know, it's like a note. And generally on the note, it is written that we would suggest you to take your next test after around 15 days 10 or 15 days i think they still give a note like that i'm not sure but i think they do give so maybe pt is trying to give you a hint that don't take tests you know back to back very quickly like within one week or something like that wait at least two weeks or something like that but it's not that you know like if you take a test like seven times eight times it's going to be more and more and more and more and more difficult no it's not like that had it been like that, you know, people would have never been getting 8 each. Like I've come across students who have taken like 20, 30 times till they get 8 each, which means it's not like that. I mean, it's not like that. So don't worry about that. All right. Thank you. Well, Shubham Sharma has a question. I'm very weak in long repeat sentences. Please give me some method. Well, one method which many people use is noting the initials. All right. So you can try to note the initials. Because after the audio ends, remember there is no beep in repeat sentence, but you get at least three seconds before you can start your new, I mean, before you give your answer. So after the sentence ends, it's like three, two, one, and then the bar starts moving, the recording bar. So just try to note down your initials and then remember what those initials were and try to be fluent. But you require a lot of practice for that. Without practice, it's not possible, you know, suddenly overnight to, you know, become really good at repeat sentence and write from dictation. Another way, as I always recommend, is try to understand the phrases. It's just a game of understanding the phrases and keeping the mind very relaxed. You know, most of the times people come under immense pressure in repeat sentence. And if I don't repeat, my score goes down. If I don't repeat it 100% right, my score goes down. I mean, yes, the score will go down a bit. But it's not going to you know impact the overall score so much it's more about psychology rather than execution i mean both are linked but still so just be a bit fluent and don't hesitate don't stop just say it right or wrong finish the sentence as you start all right mohin has a question now what do you do in exams inside how many practice for so many score 60 about i'm sorry mohin your i'm Difficult. I mean, it's a bit difficult to understand your question. If you can just explain it a bit better. What do you do in exams inside? How many practice for so many scores 60 above? I mean, you need to take at least two or three tests if you want to score around 60. If that is your question, if you want to score more than 58, that's a bad 6.5 score equivalent to IELTS. You should take at least three or four practice tests before you sit for the actual exam. Because without practice tests in the real exam, it's going to be a bit difficult. So at least three to four tests is what i would recommend and uh, definitely have a look at the prediction file of questions for the month of may 2019 pt tutorials has come up with a prediction file for may 2019 and hopefully very soon we'll also come up with a file for june 2019 that will be for the next month that will be uploaded in the last week of may so keep on checking out our page and hopefully the file will be ready soon thank you well, Sarmishta Parekh has a question. My last score is 59, 67, 54 and 80. But oral fluency is 54 and pronunciation is 19, unfortunately. I'm struggling to get 65 each. Please guide me. Well, if your fluency is 54, 
then I think you need to be a bit faster, Sir Mr. Maybe it's the speed at which you're speaking. Maybe it's a tone which is, you know, a bit passive. You need to sound a bit active, you know. Speak with a bit more energy and speak a bit faster than you would normally in your day-to-day -day life. Another thing is that if your pronunciation score is just 19, then I will also recommend you to, you know, speak a bit louder. Try to be a bit more clear. So that might help your pronunciation score. And as I said, increase the volume to around 80% before the test starts. That's highly recommended to get a good score in pronunciation and clarity. And also in read aloud and repeat sentence, just try to be really clear with your pronunciation. Don't rush through the sentence. Just be not too slow, not too fast. Speak at a neutral speed, which is easy for the software to understand. And try to speak with a flat voice like the way I have right now. I'm not stressing on words at all. So just keep your voice very neutral, very calm, very flat. That's the best way to remove any accent from the voice. And the clarity goes up. Thank you. Well, Man, Man has a question. My oral fluency is very low and I'm struggling to get 65 each. What should I do? Well, if your oral fluency score is low, I would suggest you to practice every day speaking in English. You can practice it on the group. You can practice it on the PT Tutorials Telegram group. You can share your sample recordings. You can also make a subgroup of friends and you all can practice within, you know, with one another. That will also help you to improve. But basically, to get a good score in oral fluency, in all the speaking tasks, you need to speak very fluently. So basically, there should be no extra pauses. There should be no incorrect pauses. You should know where to take the correct pause because if you stop, you know, talk non-stop without pausing at all, again, the score goes down. And that will definitely not help the score at all. So just try to speak a bit fast and take the correct pauses after every few words. That is the best way to improve the fluency score as far as I know. I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Well, Moyuddin Hamid, hi, good to see you over here. Thank you for joining in the session. Please give some guidance how to improve reading score, especially fill in the blanks. Well, Moyuddin, firstly, I'll be very honest with you. I mean, sometimes we feel that we are not that good with fill in the blanks. And because of that, our reading score is not going up. Well, many times it may be true, but other times, the issue also is with the other modules. Like, you know, I've seen so many students who get a perfect 90 in speaking. Still, they don't speak in the correct way in read aloud. Even I mean, despite the fact that they're not speaking correctly in read aloud, they still get 90 in speaking. But because of their incorrect way of speaking in read aloud, the reading score goes down. So basically everything is linked, you know. So I would like you to mainly analyze if your read aloud is actually in the right way. That's the first thing. Second, also in summarize written text. Are you picking up the main sentences? Yes or no? Or are you picking up the main words? Yes or no? You have to think these things. Now coming to the fill in the blanks. As I said, generally only two things matter. One is vocabulary. Second is grammar. Only these two things matter in the reading blanks. And thirdly, obviously, your logic, basically the knowledge of the context. For example, if I'm from a commerce background or a finance background, and if I'm shown a passage of science related document or something like that, then even I might struggle. I know it's a common problem. It happens with a lot of people because everyone need not necessarily know everything about everything. So, but still, it's not that difficult, I think. You just need to, you know, improve your overall or holistic knowledge of the types of questions which might come. Secondly, like even you know, you've been taking PT since some time now, as I think. So the questions are repetitive in PT and there are a lot of real test questions available everywhere. Even on the prediction file, there are a lot of fill in the blanks. Even on PT Tutorials app, there are real test blanks. So I would recommend you to focus on the real good sources where you can get the real test questions from. That might definitely improve your chances if you understand the questions and why the answer is the given answer. And fourthly, always see what is before and what is after the blank, mainly the grammar. Grammar plays a very major role, but people hurry up so much unnecessarily. Or on the other hand, sometimes people are stuck for a very long time in a single question. 
So basically everything is about, you know, balance. You have to not take too much time. You should not also take too less time. Just give the question the importance it deserves. So basically, you know, play every ball on its merit. That's what they do in cricket. Like, so that's what you also need to do. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Well, I think there was one more question that in repeat sentence, if I say one word wrong, will it impact the other scores? So in repeat sentence, the scoring criteria is that if your answer is not 100% right, if it's more than 50% right, you still get two out of three marks in content. So still, you don't lose everything, but yes, your listening score goes down a bit. So don't worry too much. What is gone is gone. Just focus on speaking fluently. That is what you should do in the test, even in repeat sentence. Well, Chetan Sharma had a question that, hi, sir, I'm struggling with writing, how to improve writing. So for writing, Chetan, focus on the reading drop down blanks focus on summarized spoken text mainly on the grammar focus on listening fill in the blanks spellings and grammar it should be accurate focus on write from dictation has to be bang on accurate you cannot make a mistake in write from dictation also in the main tasks of writing that is summarized written text and the essay there should be no mistakes of grammar and spelling these two things really always remember grammar spelling grammar spelling grammar spelling should be accurate. No mistakes mean no mistakes. Well, Mayuri has a question. Can you do a read aloud question and show us in this session or at least in the next one? That's going to help us a lot. So I'm just reading out your question. This is the correct speed. Can you do a read aloud question and show us in this session or at least in next? That's going to help us a lot. That is the correct speed. I took the pauses only at the full stops because they were very short sentences. So there was no need to pause anywhere in between the sentence. So that was the right speed. Thank you. Thank you, Moyutin. Thanks for liking the comment. Thank you. Well, so Shubham has a question. Please tell me one thing related to summarize written text. In this section, can I use only first and last paragraph and summarize text? Because of in the first section, introduction is available. In the last section, conclusion is available. I mean, yes, sometimes only the introduction and the conclusion might be important. But you need to understand Shubham, like in every question, it might not be the same story, right? Even you can understand what I'm saying, very simple English I'm using. So yes, many times the introduction and conclusion might have what is very important, but you cannot neglect the body paragraphs. The body might have something very vital for the score. So you should have a look once, you know, at the first sentence and the last sentence of every body paragraph, how the body paragraph start and end, start and end, start and end. So that might be very helpful because generally you get a hint, you know, starting with the introduction, I mean, the first sentence of the paragraphs and the last sentence of every paragraph might have something important. So just scan it very quickly and you might be able to make up your mind with those sentences. But yes, introduction and conclusion generally are very important paragraphs. You are right. Well, uh, one more question asked by Chetan. Does templates... Actually, there are grammatical mistakes in your sentence, just correcting you. It should be, do templates help in summarized spoken text? Well, the answer is yes and no. You should know how to use a template correctly. Because many people have seen follow a template, but unfortunately, the template itself has mistakes or people don't know how to put in words in a template. And both of these things is going to, I mean, are going to kill your score. That's for sure. So you can use a template. But just be very accurate with the template, you know. There should be no mistakes. I mean, it depends. But there should be no mistakes. That is the bottom line. If you are using a template, whether you are not using a template. And always remember the main thing in summarize spoken text is again, grammar and spellings. If you are not sure about complex sentences, please don't write complex sentences. Just write simple sentences, short sentences or small sentences with correct English. That's the only requirement of not making mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, you will get a very good score in writing. All right, so I think with that, we'll bring the live session to an end. It's been a fairly productive session, I think. I tried to cover as many questions. I think I covered all the questions asked in the session. Well, one more question. Hello, sir. How does the score for written discourse? How is it calculated? On what factor? A lot of factors. One is mainly what you're writing, that is the content. Second is, I mean, how are the words related, you know, like coherence and cohesion. Coherence means, you know, logical structure in this writing part and cohesion means the flow. So basically these are parameters even in other tests of English like IELTS, 
coherence and cohesion and there's one more, one more thing called task response so all these things mainly are a part of written discourse mainly the flow of writing the structure of writing you know everything should be in sync so you should write in a way which the software understands and appreciates i mean appreciation is later understanding is first so that's mainly the score of written discourse but don't worry too much even if the written discourse scores are down i mean i mean he's down because there can be inaccuracies even pt writes on the scorecard that the enabling skill scores might not be 100 percent accurate and there might be inaccuracies because it's an algorithm it's a software it's not a human being which is checking your answer so those scores may be a bit low like 50 or 60 still writing can definitely be 90. so don't worry too much about written discourse just focus on correct english that's the only requirement well ranveer has an interesting question adding extra words in dictation does it reduce the marks well if you do it just once maybe the answer is no it will not reduce your marks but if you do it in every sentence and obviously i will not recommend doing that but as far as possible, just write the exact sentence because the instruction very clearly states that you need to write it exactly. So if no other choice, then maybe you try it once, but not like for every word in the sentence, just maybe once. You may try it. It will not reduce the score if you do it just once. Well, Shubham has a question. Sir, I need overall 58, not less than 50 for postgraduate study, which is the most important part in PT. No, it's not like most important part, Shubham, because... The thing is that in PT, everything is correlated. The speaking score impacts the listening and reading scores. The writing score impacts the reading score. The reading score impacts the writing score. And the listening score impacts the reading and the writing score. So everything, you know, revolves around accuracy in a few of the main tasks. So in speaking, try to be really confident and fluent. In writing, don't make spelling and grammar mistakes. In the reading module, manage your time smartly. And in listening, focus towards the last task in the end and the first task, definitely. So may, my main suggestion is always focus on the integrated tasks. Integrated tasks are where you do two things at the same time. For example, the first task in speaking is called read aloud. You read and you speak. So you get marks for reading and speaking. So think like that. Whenever you do two things at the same time, you get marks for two things. And those tasks are more important. So focus on those tasks. So friends, last thing that next saturday that's the 25th of may i have my pte master class in melbourne cbd so the fees for that class is just 220 dollars and it will cover all the topics in pte in detail and it will be a very intense class of approximately seven hours so in case you're in melbourne if you don't have much time to prepare but you want to know all the techniques and the strategies to aspt just attend my class and i mean surely you will benefit a lot from just one class like in the last master class, I clearly remember, I think around more than 20 people came and I think around nine have shared their scorecards with me so far. And nine out of 20 people have got eight each with just one class. So I'm not claiming full credit for their scores. But what I'm trying to say is that one class does make a massive difference in clearing the concepts and understanding the techniques. You know, you might be firmly believing that what you're doing is the right thing. But unfortunately, it may not be the right thing. And that one class clears that misconception. And then you know that had I done this class a long time back, I would not have to take PT so many times before. You just need somebody to you know guide you on the correct track. That's the main thing and that's what I give in the class. So just be very careful and I hope that will help you. Another thing is that today is the 17th of May and I think almost 30 of my students have got scores of 80 in the first 17 days of May. So I think that's a good number. Just one center compared to so many institutes which are like, you know, I don't know how many branches there, just one center, one person, one institute, almost 30 scores of 80. So you can understand the quality of training and the feedback which we provide, especially I provide to all my students. I want all my students to get 80 each, not even a single student should not get 80 each. Even if the level is low, the level should go up. So that's my only aim. So always understand what you need to get the desired score. And still 13 more days, 14 more days in May. So hopefully a lot of more scores should be coming. And last but not the least, always aim for a score of a perfect 90. That's the best thing. All right. And as I'm saying again, the prediction file for the month of June will be live very soon. Hopefully by the end of next week, around 25th or 26th of May. That should be when the prediction file for the month of June will be ready. So till then, think PT, think PT.